People seek hypnotherapy for many reasons, phobias, anxiety, weight loss, or to stop smoking. But you might wonder what actually happens in hypnotherapy. So I'm going to talk about what happens in hypnotherapy sessions, how many you are likely to need, what are the chances of success, and how do you know if your hypnotherapist is any good. I will focus mainly on phobias and anxiety, as that is what my channel is all about. But I will touch on other issues also. In the first session, the hypnotherapist is likely to ask about the history and severity of your problem. They will also explain what hypnosis is and what it isn't. They will probably give you a rough idea of how many sessions they think you will need. For something like smoking, this is often just one or two. For phobias, anything between two and five is common. And for weight loss, four to six sessions. Although with the latter, some clients will choose to have regular top-ups to keep them on track. The actual hypnosis may start in the first or second session. The hypnotherapist will use an induction to relax you. The method used varies. It may involve a visualization or progressively relaxing your body from top to bottom, or fixing your eyes on a single point while the hypnotherapist makes suggestions of tiredness and relaxation. Once you're relaxed, the hypnotherapist may give suggestions to deepen the relaxation. This may involve counting down from 10 to 1 or visualizing going downstairs. As a result of the deepener, you are likely to experience a level of relaxation that you have not experienced before. Once you are deeply relaxed, the hypnotherapist will give you positive suggestions to help you overcome your problem. After the suggestions, the hypnotherapist will perform the wake-up in order to bring you out of this deep state of relaxation and to reorient yourself. This is usually something like counting up from 1 to 5 with suggestions of increased awareness with each number, finally opening your eyes on number 5. However, there is a lot more to hypnotherapy than just hypnosis, and this is how to tell how good your hypnotherapist is. The therapy part is particularly important for phobias and anxiety. Systematic desensitization is something the hypnotherapist should be trained in, and should be using for phobias and some types of anxiety. In systematic desensitization, the hypnotherapist helps you draw up a hierarchy of fear. Here is an example of a hierarchy of fear for spider phobia. Over the next few sessions, when you feel relaxed after hypnosis, you will be exposed to something on your list, starting with something easy, like a picture of a spider, and working your way up to seeing or even handling a real spider. If your hypnotherapist is treating you for a fear, then you really should be exposed to that fear to be successful. Unless, of course, it's something like flying, which is not practical. But even then, they could play aircraft noises or a video to see what level of anxiety it induces. Many therapists just opt for imagined exposure during hypnosis, which is a perfectly legitimate hypnosis tool to use. But there is no substitute for the real thing. If you can tolerate the source of your fear in the therapy room, then you can tolerate it in the real world, and the fear will diminish. If you're being treated for something like weight loss, then your hypnotherapist should be checking progress with you, and talking about any challenges you are having, so that they can adjust the suggestions used in hypnosis accordingly. They are using something like aversion therapy, where you are given suggestions that you will dislike a food that you are eating too much of, then they should, where practical, expose you to your problem food after the hypnosis, or at least the following week. Whatever your problem is, the hypnotherapist should be checking progress. If they just read the same script to you every week and don't do much else, then they are probably not very good. So what are the chances of success? Well, this is dependent on several factors, including what you're being treated for, how good the hypnotherapist is, and how you rate on the hypnotic suggestibility scale. Yes, there is such a thing. Some people are highly hypnotizable. These are the people that stage hypnotists don't select to have some fun with, but they are also people who may get more benefit from hypnotherapy than others. This might be why evidence for the efficacy of hypnosis for more severe anxiety problems like panic disorder, OCD and GAD is limited to individual case studies, while the gold standard randomized controlled trials usually shows that hypnosis is not effective for the majority. But a good hypnotherapist should not take on more severe mental health conditions or will recognize the limitations of hypnotherapy and train in and utilize other therapies that supplement the hypnotherapy for these more severe conditions. That being said, hypnotherapy can be great for mild anxiety issues like phobias, and it's probably the least stressful and quickest way to get rid of a phobia. It's also quite a pleasant experience. So whether you try hypnotherapy is up to you, 
But to summarize, here are the pros and cons. Pros, good for mild anxiety conditions like phobias, not as stressful as some other therapies, pleasant experience, it may work better for a few individuals who have higher suggestibility, can be combined with other therapies for more serious conditions if the hypnotherapist is suitably trained. Cons, lacks evidence of efficacy for the majority in the case of more severe conditions like anxiety disorders. There's many different governing bodies for hypnotherapy, so quality of therapists vary. Finally, if you would like to experience hypnosis, try my hypnosis video playlist. And if you would like to learn about cognitive behavioral therapy, which is the recommended treatment for anxiety disorders, then check out the relevant playlist for your anxiety disorder. I have a playlist for panic disorder, social anxiety, OCD, health anxiety, and generalized anxiety disorder. Take care now.